we're going to start things off with a tool called Radiant Photo from Radiant Imaging Labs. And uh, this is a product that I helped design. Um, I'm working with some friends on it, and uh, we've pulled it all together. And we built a photo editor that works the way we like to work. Um, so Radiant Photo is designed to optimize images. So what it can do is look at a photograph and recognize the contents of the photo and see the challenges, identify the different parts, the zones, and then optimize those for color and sharpness and really bring it out. I wanna show you how this actually works. So Radiant is designed to work as a plugin or a standalone application. So you can use it either way, uh, it's up to you. Um, currently there's two workspaces, quick edit and detailed edit. We'll be unveiling a third workspace, hopefully next week, uh, that takes all the color grading tools and expands them out and gives it a little bit more breathing room uh, so you can more easily work with those tools, okay? So here we go. Let me start with the quick edit workflow. And this is nice and straightforward. And you just bring pictures in. So you can click, navigate to any pictures that uh, you wanna edit. Let's just bring in something here, simple. And uh, I'll bring those in. So this is gonna analyze the pictures and open them up. Now, when it actually opened the picture, it actually enhanced it already. So one mistake that people make is like, well, I don't need to do anything, or they start moving sliders. This is what the picture looked like when you opened it. So Radiant was able to detect the scene and mask out the different areas. For example, it detected that the sky was already properly exposed, but the other area of the picture was not. The idea behind the quick edit tools is that we chose to give you just enough control if you're in a hurry. So quick edit is meant for people who wanna get things done and don't wanna be overwhelmed by sliders. So the smart editing tools are the AI powered stuff. I'm gonna take those down here all the way to zero. So what's happening here is strength is making the recommended changes to exposure. And so this is balancing out the tonal issues. And color is making the color correction. So you can see there that it pulled out a whole bunch of the color cast and other issues related with the shot. Deep skin tone is only for photos that have darker skin tones, and I'll show you some of that later. Below this, we have an AI exposure slider. So low, medium, high are pushing it, but still not clipping things. Light diffusion is going to soften the light and make it more even. So it takes the light and applies like a diffuser, a global softening. And then depth is going to add selective contrast, but more so than clarity, it brings out a richness in the blacks. And then you have a traditional vibrancy. So what happens here is as you opened up each picture, it went in and thought about what was there. It saw this as a landscape at night, and it was able to bring out the colors. Here, we saw plants and vegetation. Here's another one of my shots of the Grand Canyon, and it just evened out the exposure quite nicely. One of the things that I'm really happy with is that we really try to take control of the picture, but not overdo it. So I'm going to switch to detailed edit for a moment and just explain the difference here. So you've got the tonal adjustments. You've got the portrait adjustments and then the color grading. And color grading is for stylizing photos. So each of these offers some pretty cool things. And I just wanna take a moment to kind of walk you through what those do. So first up, uh, when you're using Radiant, you can use it as a standalone application and that's fine. Uh, it will open up raw files. It works with TIFFs really well. It is a 16-bit workflow. Uh, it also includes the ability to batch export several pictures and do the file format conversion on the way out. Uh, if you're on Windows, make sure you download the raw extension pack from Microsoft. We include that in the instructions uh, and that improves the raw compatibility. Uh, and we continue to expand raw compatibility as we go forward, but uh, make sure for Windows, you install the Microsoft raw pack and that's gonna help. Uh, it also works as an external editor for Milio Photos and Capture One. 
uh, and it works as a plugin for Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, and PaintShop Pro. Requires a relatively powerful computer, nothing insane, but basically a computer made within the last seven years will do the trick, but uh, it does like to use your GPU if you've got a decent GPU, and uh, all of these languages are supported. Okay, so let's go through the workflow. First up, when you open up the picture, it analyzes the scene. This uses AI to detect the contents of the photo so it can make a recommendation on the editing. Then it applies a smart preset. Now, I want to talk about those smart presets for a second because it's pretty cool. You'll notice over here on the left, we have two categories, pro and subtle. Let me switch to pro for a moment. The pro presets are the ones designed for pictures that have had no edits applied. So if you open up raw photos or undeveloped files, Pro is meant to be your starting point. So here, it detected the landscape, it applied the corrections. And if we take a look at the histogram, you'll see that we have a really good coverage here with very minimal clipping. Now, if you need to, if you're concerned about any clipping whatsoever, that's what the white point and black point sliders are for. So you can move those to recover additional parts of the white point, and you could be pretty aggressive there. And that basically pulls everything back. And then same thing, you could move the black point, although it's fine to generally have some clipping in there uh, in the really darkest of the shadows. I know some people get concerned about that. And that's why you have a white point and a black point for recovery. Additionally, at the very bottom, you have finishing tools. And these are like your traditional develop tools. We call them finishing tools because we intend for you to use them at the very end to refine the picture. So if you wanted to, say, put a little more lift to the shadows, you could do that. Or maybe you want to back the white point off a little bit. Those tools there are using AI as it recognizes the content of the photo and it makes the editing suggestions. So if I open up uh, some different pictures, for example, let's go here and I'll open these up. And you're gonna see that it recognizes the scenes differently. Landscape, landscape, right? So it's able to see that content, but depending upon the scene, it recognizes things. So for here, it recognized person and it prioritized recovering the person and doing some gentle portrait adjustments. So it's really able to go in and recognize the content of the photo and come back with some suggestions to help you bring that about, okay? Now, besides the pro and subtle, you have the ability to make your own smart presets. And that will allow you to store your own settings in here and have them used. Well, most of these sliders are smart. So if you tackle a picture that's already too bright and you start to move the exposure slider, it's only gonna push things so far. See, it said, hey, I don't recommend you go further. If you force it, it is gonna keep going. Uh, and this is a very bright picture here. It was very overexposed but it is recommending that. And so the sliders do respond to what's there. So for example, if I calculate this uh, to calculate the correct exposure, and I say that I'd like to put a little more contrast, it's gonna put that contrast into the areas that have contrast, but not affect the water down here. And so some of these sliders are very targeted. So for example, as we talk about some of the color sliders here, Fidelity is designed for blues, purples, and greens. And so as you adjust that, you're gonna see with the standard vibrance here, it's going to be very smart at tackling areas with excessive color. And so it's actually toning down the blues and greens and purples and making them look natural. And here's a great example of that. So here, we have a very bright picture, right? So I'm going to actually let that go a little bit darker. And as I look at that, it's fine, but the greens look totally artificial. 
So by being able here to tackle that vibrancy and tackle the fidelity, look at how the greens are brought back to a natural green as opposed to that overly neon green. So this is designed to deal with those challenging areas. Now, first up, I want to specify that if you have a file that is a raw file, that is particularly problematic, it is absolutely fine to pre-process your raw file before you open that into Radiant. Uh, so if you find yourself needing to do a little bit of extra work, you can do that. So for example, let me open this up with Photoshop for a second. And I'm going to do a basic targeted adjustment uh, to the file in Photoshop. Then I will take it into Radiant and show you it going a little bit further. Uh, you can use this with any raw processor. Radiant can open and decode raw files. We will be adding some additional raw development tools later in 23. But we also recommend that if you have a raw workflow, go ahead and use that and then do the handoff. So here in Lightroom, it's fine, or in Camera Raw, I'm gonna recover the highlights a little bit more and just click Auto here to get a ballpark. And that's okay, that's where it put the balance at. Uh, but we're gonna talk more about these later. But for example, I can use the selection tool here to say, select the sky, and then just apply a little more adjustment there and pull the sky down. So now I'll just open that into Photoshop. I recommend you open as a smart object. That lets you use filters non-destructively. So now we open that up and it hands it off. And once I'm in Photoshop, I can use Radiant on top of the image. Filter, Radiant, Radiant Photo. This is gonna take the photo and hand it off and still be able to do quite a bit more. So Radiant works as a plugin or as an extension for Lightroom, and it works as a standalone. So in this case, I like where that's going. I wanna put a little more contrast in this scene, and I'm gonna turn exposure off for a second. I wanna back off the strength here, so it's not as aggressive on the exposure adjustment, but I like the color correction that it's doing to get the nice clean whites and blacks. I'll put a little more light diffusion in to soften the light and bring out the definition there. And you could see what it did there to really richen the dynamic range in the shadows. I really like how it's enhancing uh, the differences here between black and white. And you can even see that right there on the surface with the brick, how it's bringing out that dynamic range on the rock surface there. It's really coming through. There we go. Then down here under color, we're just going to turn on the fidelity to keep the colors natural in the grass and do a little bit of tint correction. And that took out the color cast in the white. There we go. And while you're at it, you can also tone the sky if you want to put a little more color grade in there or tone the foliage separately. For example, I could bring out the golds and just put a little bit more yellow into that vegetation. So now when you're all done, you just click apply and it will send the results back right there to Photoshop as part of that smart object. So that's gonna attach it right to the layer there and you've got the results. Okay, so we talked about that initial handoff. Um, the presets are there and those smart presets use scene detection. The key is if you want to make your own settings, you can do that. So for example, you can switch to any one of these pictures that you want to tweak. Let's say I saw this here as landscape, but I wanted to customize it. I can go in to the My Smart Presets, select the nighttime landscape here, for example, and say, I like that, but I'd like a little more depth. And I'd like to have more light diffusion. And I prefer just a touch of richness to the fidelity. Then all you do is save that as a preset. 
store it into the My Smart Presets collection and resave it. Then every time you have a nighttime landscape that opens up, it's going to apply that setting to it. So you can actually go through there and touch each of these up and customize how it's going to behave when it encounters that type of picture. So Radiant Photo Pro is for your undeveloped files. Subtle is for files you've already developed and just want to finish. And My Smart Presets are for custom ones that you want to make. We talked about the quick edit controls. Now we're going to explore tone, color, and details. Then we'll talk about the graduated filter, the portrait tools, and the color grading. Okay, so let's talk about the quick edit briefly. Those were all the tools that you needed when you're in a hurry. So if you really want to rush through, quick edit is designed to lightly touch up images and gives you all the essentials in one place. So when I open up these images, here we go, is a nice TIFF file. Under Quick Edit, you'll see that it recognized the landscape scene. And I can dial in the exposure, the amount of color correction, and soften the light or increase depth. And that's really going to give you what you need to quickly get the job done. The reason to switch to Detailed Edit is you want to keep going. So within Detailed Edit, the first two controls are tone and color. Later on, uh, in details, graduated filter and finishing tools we'll talk about later. Those are going to be moving to a third tab called color grading uh, next week. So exposure is an AI exposure, and it is not a single exposure value. So if I adjust this, you're going to notice that different parts of the picture are adjusted differently. So for example, when I take a look here at a portrait, and I adjust exposure, notice how the different parts are changing. There's also face-aware exposure, which can automatically calculate using the face. So without targeting the face, with the face. This is perfect because it's like you metered on the face when taking the picture, and you let it calculate the correct exposure. And look at how it just lifted out the clothing without changing or overblowing the face exposure. So face aware exposure calculates the face when it drives the actual adjustment. So when you use face aware exposure, it's gonna to continue to utilize the face as the target when you calculate the correct exposure value, which is pretty cool. All right, so here's one of my shots from London. It's a landscape at night, cityscape, same thing, basically non-people. And I love how it's really lifting up the shadows. So under tone, super contrast is a very targeted contrast adjustment. You could take it really high, in fact, and you're gonna see that what it does is just totally separates the highlights and the shadows so that your shadowy areas really have some great separation. Combine that with depth. And so depth can improve the contrast even more. And if you look at that there, look at how the fence and the highlights and those windows are just really coming out. Contrast improves the dynamic range, whereas definition is a little more subtle but creates its own type of separation. Then using the depth slider here, you can favor light versus dark. So this lets you target how the depth is calculated. You can make it favor brightness or auto calculate, but it just does a great job of separating out those shadows. Does that make sense here? These, the use of depth and uh, contrast. I think it's really impressive how it's bringing out all of that detail in the dynamic range. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Just let me know. Uh, so that's really the tonal adjustments. And you can see here that uh, with that use of depth and the use of super contrast, you can really improve the separation there between highlights and shadows. Okay. 
Now, exposure is going to calculate a correct exposure value for you, and it will target every area differently as a zone. Next are the color controls. Color contrast should be used very subtly, uh, but it increases contrast in the scene, but by looking at the color areas. So for example, if I add some color contrast here, you'll see that it restores the richness of the colors without making it overdone. Unlike a traditional vibrancy, which does that, we still have it, but I always suggest less vibrancy, color contrast is really amazing at bringing back the color because it restores the black value, the black point in the colored zones. So it really brings back a richness to the picture that doesn't look overdone like vibrancy. So you can see the color contrast there kicking in. And I hope that that makes sense to you guys. It's a really unique adjustment. And I recommend color contrast when you have a photo that looks washed out. Now, if you're doing a nighttime photo, Color contrast can still be useful, but you see that it's being really responsive here. Because there's already a lot of contrast in the scene, it's not overdoing it. So earlier, Richard made a comment that he noticed it was really image dependent, and that is the case on many of these adjustments. Color contrast is designed to be an intelligent adjustment, so it only adds contrast to the areas that need it, as opposed to vibrancy, which can kind of overdo things and produces that posterization there in the color that you probably don't want. Another smart one is tint correction. And if there isn't tint detected, then it will skip it. Maximum will let you sort of force it, but generally speaking, if there's no tint, it won't apply, okay? And the other ones here are your corrective filters. So if you're shooting at night and you want to bring back the blue, you can cool the shot. And so you'll find warming and cooling filters here that match the traditional glass ones that we used to use on cameras. So this is useful if you want to warm or cool a shot. Uh, I would use the corrective filters here. And there's also one for underwater photography as well. Okay. So I hope that that makes sense. Uh, on the color and tone. And then under details, you will find a sharpening algorithm. It's pretty standard. And noise reduction. Now, if it doesn't detect noise, it will not be enabled. So if you've already noise reduced, it's going to be gone. But if it does detect noise, then you can use that for cleanup. I've already pre-processed these and took out most of the noise. But if noise is detected, then you'll see it enabled and then you can choose it and be able to pull it out. All right, let's talk about the portrait tools next. So the portrait tools are designed to give you some of the essentials that you need. It'll normally find a face and you can see where it put those dots. If you want, you can slightly move those and those dots are going to affect things like the eye adjustments. So for example, if I zoom in on the face here, you're going to see that those dots are actually affecting the under the eye shadow. So if you want to tweak the under the eye cleanup, you can move those. So there's the dark circle removal. It's able to pull out dark circles caused by age, lack of sleep, shadows. Uh, there's lots of situations that can create dark circles. There's also the eye enhance, and what that does is sharpen and brighten the eyes nicely. So you can see how we can bring out those eyes there and just really get those to life. Now, there are catch lights. This already has a catch light in it, but you can add catch lights and actually choose different shapes, and you'll see those reflected there automatically right there in the eye itself. So you can choose different types of shapes or a softer one like that. If you just wanna put a little bit more into the eye, sometimes that sketch light could be really quite useful. So then let's go to the face. So face has teeth whitening, no teeth, 
Um, if you had a shot with teeth like this one, teeth whitening is going to let you go in and target the teeth and be able to whiten them. Now here, we're getting a little bit of spillover into the, to the lips, but I can tweak that. And uh, we also have lip sharpening that can bring out the texture in the lips. So here, let's zoom back into the lips. And what I'm gonna do is bring out a little bit of the texture in the lips with lip sharpening. And you can see there's different strengths of it. I'll back that off. But a little bit of lip sharpening is actually quite nice just to bring it back. Uh, face contouring is for slimming a face, but let's talk about skin. Smooth. Smooth is going to gently smooth out the skin without removing the natural color or too much of the texture. So you could do just the face or the full body. And there's three different methods. These are basically intensities of how strong they are and how much smoothing they're doing. For the most part, I suggest subtle. And you can see that that definitely removed some of the issues. Then there's blemish removal. And that's going to analyze for things like acne and be able to clean up blemishes on the face and soften them. So what it does is it acts as a concealer and starts to take some of the blemishes off from his face. There we go. And then infrared removal is useful for splotchiness in the skin where there's hot spots. So if the skin has red hot spots, and similarly, shine removal can tone down hot spots on the skin and really make that look less shiny. So let me choose one here that has some shine. Here we go. Shine removal is going to target the shininess of the skin and tones that down. Infrared removal looks for areas that are too red. And then I'll put a little bit of skin smoothing here just to tone that. Additionally, you can come down to the makeup controls and add skin toning where you can choose a foundation color and an amount. So you could, for example, warm the skin or tone it down. And so these are classic makeup foundation colors that you can use just to smooth out the skin a little bit and to warm it or cool it or dial in your own custom color is fine. So that's nice for putting a little bit of that in there. And then let's just fix the eyes, enhance, dark circles, there we go. And we'll put a little bit of whitening on the teeth. So it makes it simple to go in and do the light portrait retouching if you need it, okay? So you can tackle a nice wide range of images with different challenges. Uh, it will recognize different skin types. And so depending upon the subject, here it detected the darker skin. So as we start to adjust the color here and bring out uh, the overall exposure, there we go. Notice that the skin tones are still preserved as it's evening out the exposure in the scene. And even as we start to bring up some of the color here, get a little color contrast in there and fidelity for the greens, uh, it's gonna make it nice and natural. And that's gonna fill that in. Dark shadows, same thing. Here we have a pretty tough exposure. And so we can go in, check, it didn't see the face. So in this case I could add by clicking to define and apply, and now the face has been added. And so now I can go in and manually adjust that. So that will let you apply those adjustments if needed. There we go. And see, I did a little bit of skin smoothing there. Don't wanna overdo it. He definitely has some wrinkles. And uh, let's just tone down the noise a little bit. And we'll put just a little bit more color in there. 
So I'll come down to makeup here and put a little bit of skin toning in. And what I want to do is warm him up a little bit. There we go. And I could just put a little bit of warmth right into the skin zones there with the digital makeup just to make sure that his skin tone color wasn't lost as we recovered the exposure in a pretty tough scene. So if you need to, you can go in and manually add the face pretty easily there by just clicking to add the dots, okay? All right, um, let me show you a couple more adjustments and then I'll show you the batch handoff if you need to from Lightroom. So here I have a bunch of photos of the same person in an environment from lots of different angles. So what I wanna do is get the base right. I wanna get this to look the way that I want uh, with the general adjustments. So you can start on something that is kind of in the right zone, let it find a shot with a face, that's fine, and go in and make any targeted adjustments that you want, right? So you can apply any change that you think is necessary, go in, get the base level. I'm gonna do a auto exposure that's face aware, put some soft diffuse light in, bring out the shadows with some depth and uh, put a little bit of fidelity in there so that the purples and blues, see those in the background? Very targeted, they're now back to a natural color they're not overly saturated by the camera sensor. And uh, that looks good. And yep, there is noise. So I'll do a little bit of intelligent noise reduction. Great. And then from the uh, graduated filter, you'll find a bunch of adjustments, including some simple presets here. So you could apply vignettes. And this lets you really see the shape of the vignette, the transition there. And you have full control. So for example, on the outside here, maybe I wanna desaturate a little bit more and uh, put a little more contrast into the shadows. So there I created a very custom vignette, okay? So now I've got that. All I'm gonna do is say, sync all, boom. Now every image has the same adjustments applied, but I want you to pay attention here. Look at the exposure. This one's 25. This one's 21. 25, 25, 21. So depending upon the subject here, it calculated a different exposure based upon the lighting conditions of the scene. But now they're all very even. So all of my exposures and my color cast issues have been addressed, see? And so I'm able to do that. Now, I would suggest that after you set this, if you use the graduated filter, choose the place center option. This lets you offset the center point for the vignette. So now you can go shot by shot and choose where your focal point should be and move the center of the vignette. Don't just keep them dead center. See, that's, that's making a power window. By moving the center point of the vignette, you really control where the light is cast. And remember, you can come in here and really feather that there for a very gentle transition. And I could tweak the size if I need to, there we go. And that's creating a really nice lighting effect there on her arm. So the vignette controls are very, very powerful. The graduated filter is much more than a basic vignette. Uh, it is a whole power window tool. And what you wanna do is move that center point to where you want to guide the viewer's eye. And then know that you can freely rotate that as needed to really guide the light. So this is an extra step that most people don't know how to do. And I totally recommend doing this because it's amazing what you can do here to really guide the eye of where you want people to look. See, just a tremendously effective adjustment. Does that make sense to everybody? The vignette controls, the graduated filter. So using place center 
you can decide where it goes and then totally look at the object here and play with things like the shape just to really target the subject that you're aiming for. And I think it's tremendously powerful. Okay. I was able to do all 11 of those pictures here pretty quickly. All I'm doing is making these subjective adjustments here with the uh, vignette. And I really like how that's guiding the eye. So if I turn that off and on, hopefully you see that as an effective adjustment. Now, another tool is the color grading tool. So color grading is gonna give you a bunch of film stocks. Now I have a lot of optional ones loaded, but if you open these up, you'll see a preview of what they're gonna look like. And so very quickly, you can apply different types of film stocks to color grade. And once you find it, it's very easy to adjust the strength of that, as well as the contrast ratio and the saturation of the change. So that makes it easy to audition. And then as you go to different stocks, what you'll see here is that those values are going to preserve. So if you try different options out, the same strength settings are gonna apply. So that gives you the flexibility here just to really dial that in to get the type of change you want. So if I want a light filmic process, I could do that. Or there's some really great black and whites in here. I'll go to black and white portraits, for example, and just target that. And let me put the strength back to 100. There we go. And you can dial in the dynamic range or the contrast ratio on the black and white. And again, that can be applied to other options very quickly. So the color grading tools are totally optional, but you'll find a lots of really solid ones in there that you can use just to play with the treatment of the image. And there's a wide range of styles in there that you can use uh, as you're exploring. So they're all organized by things like time period, for example. There we go. And let me just go less strength, make that a little more subtle and a gentle change. There we go. Yep. So you can go in and explore those and play with the different options as you see fit. Let's go with something with a little more dynamic range here. And I'll apply a gentle film look. Let's go with a warm film. Back that off on strength. That's good, just a little less contrast. So there's my before and my after, very good. And you can then use those adjustments as you go forward, okay? Now, when you're all done, if you click save all, you get the ability to say, where do these go? So if you're using this as an external editor for any other tool, if you save them next to the originals, then they're gonna automatically be stored in the same location where the previous ones were. So that makes it really easy to drop them into the same folder where they came from. So if you were using Mylio or On One or Capture One, that's an easy way to do it. Uh, you can also choose to put them in a subfolder if you want or right next to the original. Then you can name them. So name them with Radiant or name it with the preset name or a custom name, it's up to you. But this way, it'll put it next to the original with an extension. And uh, you can decide how to save the file. So 16-bit TIFF is the highest quality. You could choose your color space. Uh, and if it's coming from a raw file or a 16-bit TIFF, it'll make a 16-bit file. Otherwise, you can go to JPEG or PNG files and uh, easily save those out. And again, specify the desired color space you want. Um, Adobe RGB is gonna be one of the easier ones. Pro Photo is good if you intend to take it into another tool and do more editing. Uh, and then just click the save button. I don't suggest checking this box. Use these settings without asking. Uh, if you do, it'll just automatically save without asking. If you know you want that, that's fine. In the future, if you do that and then you forget, file save as will bring back the dialog box so you can tweak it. Uh, but when I click save, it's now just gonna batch process those. And so we've got 11 files here. It's going to probably take a minute, maybe two tops. And so you'll see that it starts to process those. And there we go. Good. I always like when it takes less time than I said it was going to take. 
So each of those is being written to disk and uh, you can see that they're just plowing right through. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, let me, I showed you Photoshop. Let me show you Lightroom. So let me bring in some pictures. So uh, file import. And I'm just gonna bring in some photos really quick. So you have two options when working with Lightroom. Oh, I already brought those in, <laughs> even easier. Okay, so option one is uh, you can choose the pictures you want and just select them all and that's fine. So for example, let me choose uh, this from the trip to Tokyo. So I can select all, uh, here I'll do one that I haven't done yet, there we go. This trip to the Outer Banks, so select all. And you have two options. Option one is the photo menu and you can choose edit in and then Radiant LR, that's the Lightroom plugin, okay? So Radiant Photo down here, same thing, that's gonna work as well. And what that does is hands everything off to Radiant. Now, when you do that, it's like other Lightroom plugins, you're gonna be given a choice. Do you wanna take the adjustments you've done in Lightroom? If so, it's gonna make TIFF files, okay? Easy enough. Uh, and it'll apply the color space, the conversion and everything else. If you wanna make a copy, that's fine. And you can edit the original files unless they're raw files. So in that case, Lightroom insists uh, on doing a conversion. So you can select all of those and do it that way. That's fine. Uh, but if you're in a hurry, you can do it this way. File, export, and just choose Radiant as the target. Now you can choose a preset right here. So if you know what you want to do, I could say, hey, go ahead and use the, the Radiant Subtle. And so you can actually choose, because these were already developed, so I'm just going to finesse them, the Subtle. Don't even show me the Radiant window. Go ahead and put them in the same folder. Go ahead and add them back into Lightroom and go ahead and stack them on top of these. Great. And I just look it over, that's fine, good. I can specify the file format. So if I didn't wanna take up a lot of space, I was just doing this for quick web sharing or to send to the client for review. You can use this to basically pre-process JPEGs so you can email them to the client and get feedback or just look at them without taking up a lot of disk space. Choose what you want, there we go. And then click the button. And so now it's not even gonna show me Radiant, it just starts processing here. See, processing with Radiant Photo. And it's stacking them right there in Lightroom with the auto enhance, with the enhanced image right on top. So now it's finishing up and handing back those results. So it runs as a background tool that way. If you wanna just quickly process and not have to even leave Lightroom, and there we go, it was done. So now, if I look at these, the enhanced photos on top, okay? So there's the improved, there's the original. Improved, original. So you can see in all cases there with that subtle adjustment, it just improved the lighting overall. And so it automatically stacked that with the one in Lightroom. That was the batch export option uh, where you didn't even see what happened. Does that make sense? And then if you want to see it, because you do want to tweak image by image, then you can still hand it off, and that's fine, edit in uh, Radiant, or you can do the batch. What I like about the batch is that I can choose how it stacks. So I'm a bit of a control freak, and I like it to stack it automatically and put it on top. That way I could see it. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to split the, the I'm going to go to the higher quality TIFF. That's fine, 16 bit pro photo, that's full quality. And I'm gonna say, don't hide the radiant window. So now when I run this, you'll see that Lightroom generates the new images here. That's what it's doing. And so first Lightroom has to make the new files that it hands off, then it starts putting them into radiant. And in each case, it's optimized the color and exposure as well as other issues there, see? And I could tweak these, of course, 
So if you're in a hurry, just use quick edit. And hey, a little less intensity there on the color, soften the light, a little bit of depth, cool. Go to the next image, right? So you can fly right through and make any changes that you want in quick edit or anywhere else and see what the difference is. In this case, uh, I want to do a little bit more noise reduction and a little sharpen. Good. And let's put on the vignette. There's lots of presets in here to help. That's fine. But you can continue to go through and tweak each image. And when you're all done, you just hit save all. And they'll start to process and get handed back off into Lightroom. Now, if you recently updated your Mac OS, I strongly suggest you go to your system preferences and you give Lightroom full disk access. Because if you don't, Lightroom has a problem recognizing files that get put into the folder. It doesn't know how to update and find those without you re-importing them. But if you tell it it has permission to check with full disk access under your system preferences, then you're going to have less issues as it does this handoff. So you can see here, it's just processing all those files, and each one's being written back to disk. If I go into Lightroom, I can see that it's handing them back, and it updated. So there was the different changes, right? See? And it stacked them with the original in all cases, just giving me the better exposure and evening it out, as well as bringing out some of the detail and the texture. So you can go through, tweak the settings as you want, but it does make it easy to do that handoff, okay? Cool.